Okay, so let's start suturing. I've got my needle, my needle's mounted, two-thirds, one-third along the way, and we're going to do some simple interrupted stitches. And the idea of this is that you get to the wound, you decide where you're going to start, and you want to have a look at the wound and try and get the full depth of the wound so it comes in as a curve. You don't want to close the top and leave the bottom part exposed, otherwise you'll have what's called a dead space, and that will increase your risk of infection. So when you make your decision to go how far do you start away from the wound, you want to be able to use the curve of the needle, that's why it's designed that size, so the whole thing is going in one swoop. You don't want to fight the needle, let the needle do the work. So you go in at right angles to the skin, the point is actually going at right angles, not plain, planar with it, not 45 degrees, it's going at 90 degrees to the wound. And as it comes through, we then let it come in 90 degrees on the other side, equidistant, the same distance away that we started. And as that comes through, you push that through, and you have to be careful to avoid the tip of the needle when you're picking it up with your needle holder, because you don't want to squash that. Now, we've got a very long stitch in here, so I'm going to just make life easier for myself by cutting part of that stitch away, because we don't need it all. So now what I need to do is to close that wound. And as I'm pulling that through here, I can pop the needle holder down for the minute and pick up my stitch just on here. You put the needle holder inside parallel to the wound. And I make one throw, make two throws. I then take the end of the stitch. And as I bring it across, if you watch, you'll see that knot is coming square against the wound. When I've done that, I'd let go and I make another loop in the other direction and as I tie that knot is square. So that stitch is now made, it's done. I can put in another throw if I want to. Depending on the stitch material I'm going to use, I'm going to change the throws. This is silk. I don't use silk to sew but we're using that because it's a nice demonstration of how you can do it on here and you can see the visuals. So I can stop there at that point. This is braided and so it sticks to itself. It's rough. If I was using ethylon or proline, that's thin, but it's also maybe thick, but it's also slippery. So I'm going to need to use more knots to keep it together. So now to lift it up, you lift up the two ends and you make a decision to cut where you're going to cut. Now, how far do you leave the knots? How long should you leave the knots? Do you ever get it right? Of course you do. The way to do it is to make sure the length of the, of the stitch you leave behind is going to not interfere with the next stitch along. If it's too long, it's going to get snagged. If it's too short, then it's going to be hard to find the stitch when you take it out. So the distance that you put the next stitch is purely based on how far you're going to cut the length of the stitch. And you make a decision to put it so that the, the distance between the two is square. That's all you've got to do. When you look at a wound, you say, my next stitch is going to be such that it's square with the first one. So when I've done that, I know that that length of that stitch isn't going to interfere with my knot. That's it. That's the magic of it. There's nothing else more complicated than that. Take my stitch, and if you look what I'm doing, I'm using my middle finger to pull that down so that the thing lies square. Put the stitch in the middle, take it. You'll see sometimes I do one throw, sometimes I do two. The reason I'm doing that is that I'm gauging the tension that I require to close that wound. If that wound is gaping, I'll use a bit more tension and I'll put two throws. This is nice and easy because it's rubber, it's a stimulation, and there we've got two stitches in there. So you can carry on in the same way, you make your decision, you cut your stitch, and you can see that the ends of those tails don't interfere with the stitch.